church today, but the few of us that are here are the chosen ones. Men, women, children, the community. 30,000 were gathered. And David and all the people with him set out, you know, from Babel Judah to bring up the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Two people, Uzziah and Ahio, the son of Abinadab, drove the new cart with the ark of God and went in front, Ahio went in front of the ark. But something happened at that moment in time. David, King David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised today when Reverend Catherine said we should dance with all of our might because sometimes I want to say thank you Jesus because I want to dance with all of my might. Oh hallelujah. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Amen. When we are blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit we want to dance with all of our minds. We want to dance and put the devil to shame. Amen. We want to say thank you Jesus for blessing thank us. We want to say thank you Jesus for the wisdom, for the victory that in which we triumph. But you know, when Brian was reading, he actually ended at verse 5. But something happened in verse 12, which was for the down. <laughs> But I want to bring that to us so that we can have a complete picture of what's going on here. <coughs> now, first of all, in verse 5, it says that David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their minds, with songs, with lies, with harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. I think today we have the keyboard, we have, you know, all manner of instruments amongst us, you know, we, we clap our hands and so on. So, but we were praising God, we were dancing. Yeah. In verse 12, it says, So David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obededom to the city of David with rejoicing. It didn't say that they went to get it with sadness. It didn't say that they went to get it in the darkness or in the dark hours. It said that they went to get the ark to the city with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six pace, David sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was gathered with a linen. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Can we just give God a round of applause? So there was still a lot of rejoicing and dancing going on. And verse 16 says, the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. I tell you one thing, right? When you are rejoicing, when you are dancing, when you have every reason to celebrate, I want to tell you, somebody somewhere is going to be looking down on you with jealousy. But you need to turn around and tell them that I am blessed in Christ. There is no room for jealousy. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Verse 16 says, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Come on. How many of us have been promoted at work? How many of us have bought a new home and a new car and then you see people look out of the window and despise us because God is blessing us? You just need to turn around and tell them that we are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. There is nothing you can do. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there are people somewhere that truly do not understand the blessing of the Lord. When we struggle, when we go through a moment in life, when we go through different situations of our being, we go through ordeals. I always say that sometimes the Bible is written on the account of our community. I say to people that the Bible 
is teaching us how to show the world how to love because they do not know how to love. And I'm going to take us on a journey. Revelation chapter 7, it says something so important to us. Verse 13. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are those robed in white? And where have they come from? <laughs> come on now. Where have they come from? <laughs> I, I want to leave you with a principle here. Verse 14 says, I said to him, this person said back to the elder, Sir, you are one that knows. Then he responded back, These are they who have come out of great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Many of us have been through ordeals and tribulations. And then the elders or the leaders or, you know, the ministers are then asking, where have they come from? <laughs> Same gender loving people suddenly exist or do not exist. Where have we come from? We are the people that have gone through great ordeal and we have come out of it. That is why we recognize David when he was dancing. And we can go back and say, we are blessed in Christ. Amen. And there is no room for jealousy. Mm -hmm. Are you friend with me? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says a lot of things. It says that no weapon from the fashion against us shall prosper. The Bible says a lot of things as well. And I recall, because as I was preparing, you know, I was looking at Romans chapter 8. Mm. And Romans chapter 8 has, you know, I, I can read Romans, the whole book of Romans, mm -hmm. but if you're looking for a good place to find, you know, yourself, read the book of Romans. Mm. The book of Romans to me is a book of victory. The book of Romans is a book, that is a book of reconciliation. Yes. Because Romans chapter 8 in particular, verse 1 and 2 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. So tell me one thing. Why do people want to despise you when you are free from the law of sin mm -hmm. and death? And people do not understand that. They do not understand that the glory of God is upon us in our journey. And you know, there is another verse here in the same chapter. Verse 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And I always remember that, you know, when I, you know, preach to a congregation in Nigeria, I don't know how many people know that Nigeria is one of the most homophobic countries in the world. But one of the key things is that People come to church every day or often enough. And there are times that people have been roughened up before they get to church and they are so angry. And I remind them, I said, the Bible says we should love one another. The Bible even says that what good is it to love those who love you, love your enemies. Amen. And they'll say to me, Reverend Judy, how can you say that? How can we do that? How can we live up to this expectation of love? I want us to leave this place today loving our enemies more than we love them coming in here today. Mm. I want us to have a rethink of loving the people that despise us more than we did coming in here today. Because I always say one thing that when you mock me, you mock God, my creator, because we are wonderfully made in the image of God. Mm. People keep accusing me. I was saying, oh, you're twisting the Bible. I said, no. We're speaking the truth in reconciliation. We're speaking the truth in, in, in liberation of the people. And I want to take you to a few verses in, in First Peter, in the book, book of First Peter. I find really so much excitement and, and just so much deliverance in scriptures. There is one thing that I say to people, that we are blessed no matter where we find ourselves. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 3, I don't like quoting scriptures a lot, but I just feel led by the Spirit this time around. 
Okay, a few a few chapters and verses have gone. Okay, I mean.